swung on. There it goes. Deep left. It is high. It is far. It is gone. Number 62 to set the new. Congratulations to Aaron Judge on his record breaking home run. And rest in peace to Coolio. You're listening to Not These Two Fucking Guys podcast. I'm Rock. And I'm Archie. Well, our opinions, eh, they might not matter to some, but. It's a podcast. Immature, crass, trashy. And those are their good qualities. These poor schmucks are a couple of IQ points away from eating paste. But when it comes to music, sports, and comedy, well, that's all they know. You're listening to Not These Two Fucking Guys. Not These Two Fucking Guys podcast. Yo, Rock. What's up, dude? When I describe to you this next talent, tell me what you think. All right. Class, but ferocious, with a precise feel that leads the groove or can surprise you with gifted timing. I actually, until you said class, I thought you were talking about your sister, but. Oh, oh, oh. Obviously, uh... (laughs) Well, let me tell you something, bro. This is our next guest's passion beating right through his drum no stranger to your ears his music is with us now and forever welcome to not these two fucking guys podcast professional rock drummer liberty devito what's up lib uh it's all up it's funny (laughs) you say that that uh now and forever the music every time you know i have a band the lords with the second street because i don't play with billy anymore but we yep. do all the billy joel stuff and when i get up to talk on the mic i i tell the people straight out i can't believe people still like this shit you know, <laughs> it's, it's been like 40 years uh you know with, with different albums 50 years it's been a long time <laughs> timeless timeless yeah. is what we could say is because uh a hit is a hit is a hit so you were part of that and you know it, you hear it everywhere from from being in a store to, to to other people covering it these hits will live forever and we appreciate that well they, they were good songs i guess yeah you know just a bunch of friends that were together never knew that this would happen you know <laughs> <laughs> well let me tell you something i um i knew of you uh, i knew your name i knew the band but i did not know your story until i watched the, the hired gun hired gun yeah and that documentary one. was fucking amazing yeah. it was not, awesome now not only did i take away like i left so i took my wife to go see that in the movies because i was waiting for it to come out because I, I was following it on social media because i'm like a music nerd so was rocky and i left there going what the fuck with billy joel <laughs> 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 i was because that like your story in between inter uh, intertwining with the with the whole documentary like that was like the one of the focal points and like it was a big chunk of that 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 documentary and it was beautifully done uh jason hook i believe had a, had a big yeah. part of it or a producer yeah. yeah and uh but that's where like i heard your story for the first time and i was like i gotta i, I gotta i gotta find out more about this guy and your book came out not too long and I, I did your book, many a walks with my dog, many a nights I just sit and chill. And your fucking book was great too. Yeah, it's right Thank on. You. Thank uh, you. It's funny that the the, uh, the hired gun video, yeah, Jason Hook, you know, a uh, Fred Strain who was on the um, on the on the tour with uh, uh, Five Finger Death Punch, mm-hmm. and Jason Hook came to him at one point and said, uh, "Let's make a documentary." You know, he was just doing the filming of the shows. And uh, a, f- a friend said, uh, "Who do you want to make it about?" And, and Jason said, "How about me?" <laughs> and said, Why don't you make it about something a little more interesting? And, uh, <laughs> so they, they came up with the idea of, of hired guns, guys that had been in the business and you know been playing for somebody else. Yeah. And um, friend told Jason, he said, "If if we get anybody, the first one we should try for is Liberty." And, and so they they wrote me. And the biggest disappointment for me about hired gun is what I'm wearing <laughs> because, because look, they wrote me. I get this shit all the time time you know all the time like oh we're gonna make a video we're gonna yeah. come over your house we'll film you they do it and then you never hear from them again yeah uh, you know it always happens like that so i thought this was gonna be one of those so that's why i'm sitting in a pair of shorts and, and a t-shirt and everybody else is 
wearing leather. Yeah. <laughs> Tony Aronoff has got his sunglasses on, doing all this shit. It's like, I, I see me walking down the street down my block, picking leaves off the trees. <laughs> it's like, God damn, what? A- <laughs> well, I, I do have to admire and say that you were one of the stories that came out and I was, and I, I, I don't know, like uh, I, I always wear like the baseball hat. I always like, look, you, you look a little older than me and we look the same and I love it. And that's like, like I related to you and like you're a Italian guy from New York. We're from New Jersey. It was just, everything was like relatable, right? Rock. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, Archie hit me up directly after that. Cause he knows uh, it, again, it was a, a big Billy Joel fan growing up. And he's yeah. like, dude, dude, he's like, you got to see this. And, and Liberty stole the show. And but I'm like, dude, awesome. Archie, Archie puts me on to good stuff. I give, I give him credit for one thing. One thing. That's it. You know, it's, it's funny. I, I sat next to Kenny when we watched the, the preview in okay. uh, uh, at South by Southwest. We okay. went down there and yeah. watched it. And we just roared, you know. I loved his part. He loved my part, you know. We play alike. We, you know, I'm saying I'm talking about Kenny because that's the video you guys sent me. Yeah, it yes, it was Kenny. Yes, I got a great video of uh, me, him, and Fran, the producer of the of the hired gun video, and we're talking because me and Kenny always fight, mm-hmm. you know, when we see <laughs> each other, and we start fighting right in the middle of when Fran is trying to do this interview and stuff. But it's really cool. We had a fight once in a. In a um, a restaurant in Nashville. We broke <laughs> chairs and everything. And this poor guy that is at the table next to us is trying to ask his girlfriend to marry him, trying to give the ring and stuff. And we're like trash in the place. Oh, I love great. Kenny. He's, he's one of my favorites, you know. Rock, could you imagine a conversation between Liberty and Kenny talking I music? Think, I think that's a fucking podcast <laughs> <That's>, right there. <laughs> the, the, the way he talks, you know. I, I wrote to him and I said, "Hey Kenny, oh, I found a picture of me and him on on uh, on uh, Modern Drama magazine, yeah. and I sent him this this photo. You know, I took the two magazines together and I, I sent it to him, and and, and I, I I wrote him. He goes, I said." Kenny, I just did my book and I'm doing the the reading of it now. You know, it's like fucking not. Because Liberty, oh my god, I can't believe you fucking did that. I'm <laughs> trying to do that now. They had somebody else read that book. Yeah, the fucking fans are going to kill me. They fucking gonna, you know. I love uh, the way that man like, expresses himself. Unbelievable, yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> like we, we we talked to him and he was on. Like he's always on ten. That type of guy. Always. And uh, you, you could tell that uh, he, he was like a little pissed, right, Rock, when we were talking to him? Because he, he was like, somebody else wrote my book. No, you're not going to read my book. Yeah, it's, my yeah, book. Yeah. it's my fucking stories. It's And, and no, you're not going to read my book. Right. Well, I'm such an idiot. It took me like 55 hours to read my book. I tell you, though, it, it, it is well worth it because it, it's like your inflection, your tone, your, you know, how you experience things is I think that that captures it perfectly yeah it's better than you know they were talking about hiring somebody to read it and it's like what if it's gonna be and then like oh, <laughs> 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 it's, it's like hey we're gonna we're gonna hire a hired gun for the hired gun there you <laughs> yeah, go. <right. laughs> well speaking of your book so i listened to it last year and i just went over it again because i knew you were coming on and dude like i, I could sit here and talk about a hundred stories. I would love to get a beer with you and talk about every fucking story. <laughs> but like, there was a couple things that that like I enjoyed, and I just wanted to call them out if you don't mind. There oh, was. A, where are you guys now? We're in Jersey, Jersey. North oh, Jersey. No. What is it? Oh, <laughs> one fifty one. What is yeah, it? One fifty one on the park. Like. One fifty one. <laughs> we're uh, we're actually not too far. Well, I moved away, but we're we're actually not too far from uh, Giant Stadium. Okay. There. I and where, yeah. Are you in Brooklyn still? Yes. Yep. Nice. Hence nice. the hat. In case I get yeah. lost, somebody could tell me where <laughs> I live. <laughs> um, your your book, what I really dug was like, um, all right, like I could sit here and say, hey, Liberty, uh, where are you from? You know, what you do? Like, no, we're not going to do that. Stuff like, oh, this isn't this isn't in the book, but you did it for the audio book, mm. like the McCartney story. Like oh, you you yeah. were supposed to. So just rock. Just to reiterate, you, he was supposed to, I believe, go to a bridal party. Yes, and it it ended up being no. getting getting changed. The date yeah. get, get changed. But, but it was, please, it was, please go on. It was the same day. Uh, I get a phone call first from uh, Phil Ramone's assistant. Phil Ramone produced yep. all our albums and stuff, yep. and and it's like. Uh, Still watching the studio. 
this day. I said, I can't. I got to go to this bridal party thing. <laughs> it was for our sound man, you know. Yeah. Like, and uh, so he goes, no, no, you're going to have to cancel. You got to go. I said, who's it with? He goes, I can't tell you. <laughs> but come on. I got to cancel this thing. You want me to cancel? I can't do that. I can't. Just, it's for our sound guy. You've got to cancel. Do it. Just do it. Mm-hmm. I said, who's it for? I can't tell you. Phil doesn't want me to tell you. <laughs> uh, finally, he gives in after about 15 minutes of who's who's it for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says, all right, it's Paul McCartney. <sighs> I went, I'll call you back in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked my mother, you know, yeah. I, I, every time I got in a jam, I always asked my mom. And she said, uh, well, well, um, you, you know, who, who's it for? I said, Mom, I, I got to go in the studio. They want me to go to the studio. I got to go to Brian Ruggles, uh, his, his uh, uh, dinner, you know, for his wedding. And, you know, and my mother said, well, you know, you can't go to the studio. You're in his bridal party. You can't, you can't turn yeah. down your friend. You can't. She goes, who, who's it for in the studio? I said, Paul McCartney. She said, Frank, Brian. <laughs> she would never say fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Frick him. You, uh, you explained uh, Linda and, and Paul walking into the studio, yeah. and they fucking even knew who you were. They knew who you were coming in. It was amazing, because all the way in, I took the train from Long Island. I was a little on Long Island at the time, mm. I took the train in, and, and uh, I get to the bottom of my driveway on the way to the station, and the Rolling Stone is in there, and he's on the cover. You know, so <laughs> I read, hit the, read the article, and I closed the Rolling Stone. I'm halfway there, and I go, what the hell is he want with me? He doesn't know who I am. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, you yeah. know. So as soon as she walks in first, Linda walks in first, points right at me and goes, I know who you are. We've been watching your videos. Like, what? Like, what? When he walked in, the Red Sea parted. I'm telling you. It was like, oh, my God. There yeah. he is in person. Yeah, yeah. That's, that I, I shook his hand, and then he went to say hi to the rest of the guys. And I backed out of the studio into a hallway and said to myself, you have got to calm down. You've got to get your <laughs> shit together. And it was like the devil and the angel on each shoulder. Yeah. And, and, and one was saying like, like, oh, he's just a, another musician, just like you are. And the other was going, no, he's a fucking beetle. He is a mean beetle. You know, and I, oh, I was driving me nuts. Driving me nuts. And then there was a, one part that I put in the um, in the um, audio book about being with him. And we did one song and then we took a break. Yeah. And, you know, we had pizza. We talked about their children and all kinds of stuff like that. And I, I just wanted him to say the word Beatles. That's what I wanted him to say. <laughs> because, you, you know, they, they say the Beatles. They say it a certain yeah. way. Yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, I yeah, just yeah. wanted to hear him say it. Yeah, but yeah, he yeah. wouldn't say it. He kept saying, when I was with the other band, yeah. you know, we, gotcha. like I'm supposed to know who the yeah. other band yeah. is, you know. And, and those are, who, who are they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. The yeah, yeah, yeah. other band, you know. Like, Paul, name uh, a couple of your favorite kinds of insects. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. So he's playing, he comes back in and we go back in the studio and he sits behind the drums, starts playing the drums. And he's looking over at me, you know, he's going for about 15 minutes. The other guys come in, they start playing with him. Mm-hmm. And he's looking at me and he's like, I'm cool, right? I'm cool. I'm playing drums, you know, I'm yeah, cool. Yeah, 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 <laughs> he's yeah, like, yeah. got that look in his eye like that, you know. So he gets done and he starts walking over to me. And next to me is an acoustic guitar. And he doesn't know it, but I can play Blackbird on the acoustic guitar. Nice. I pick up the acoustic guitar and I start playing Blackbird. He stops dead in his tracks and goes, oh, my God, you can play that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Paul, I can't. Yeah, yeah. yeah Paul, so, it's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah, but we had a blast. I mean, in between the two songs that we recorded, we did like little Richard songs, or Chuck Berry tunes, all that kind of stuff. He's a real rock and roller. How, you know? uh, how long would you say that session was? Oh, it, it, it took a lifetime to get there, but yeah. it, it was probably eight hours. We were in the studio. Yeah. yeah. You probably left there with fucking just oozing of happiness <laughs> and, <laughs> and just excitement and just. It, it oh. was like, come on. You got to be kidding me. That was the greatest day of my life. You know? Awesome. That's so cool. That's, so, what, yeah. that's, what, that's what strikes me. I mean, when you look back and think about your career and all the cool shit that you've done, your list of credits and who you play with, are you sometimes like, is this real life? Like, did I do all this stuff? Like, like it, how does the effect have on you nowadays? Well, it, it, some things I forgot. 
you know, when I was writing the book and writing things that I, I did and stuff like that, I remember uh, I, I'm with this, uh, this, uh, uh, non-profit called Little Kids Rock, and they, they put oh, the yeah. instruments, you know, in the schools where uh, the curriculums were taken out. And I had to write a list for them of what I've done. And the, the guy that runs Little Kids Rock, Dave Wish, he calls me up and he goes, you know, you didn't put in there that you won Grammys and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, shit, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. you, know, like, I, you, you try not to think about what you did so you can mm. keep going forward. You know, gotcha. I remember awesome. one time I, I don't have any gold albums on the walls or anything like that. They're all in boxes in storage. Uh-huh. So I don't want to be reminded of the old. You can go into a room and go like, oh, I did that. I I did that. I don't have to do anything today. I Look what I did. You yeah. Know? Okay. I like that. Yeah. It's inspirational. You know, I don't yeah. need to, you know, you could always be hungry. Yeah. Always be hungry. Yeah. You know, I went, we went in the studio. Uh, I always admired uh, the band Traffic when I was younger. You know, mm-hmm. Steve Wimmer was in Traffic. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I used to bring the albums to school when I was in high school and stuff like that. And the, the English teacher would play them because he was really curious to see what the kids were listening to that day. Uh-huh. You know, so I, I wanted to be Steve Winwood. I know I played the drums, but I wanted to be Steve Winwood. I, I loved his voice. Anyway, so he comes in the studio. We're doing the bridge album, and he comes in to play the organ on, on Getting Closer. And I bring in my yearbook because somebody signed in my yearbook, keep your head together, and one day you'll play with Steve Winwood. <laughs> Oh and my I god! In my yearbook. Wow! It's like, <laughs> I went, you're making me feel so old. I said, I'm sorry. Man. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, but this is fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was so cool. You know, you hear those voices come through your, your headphones, or, or like when I played with Stevie Nicks for six months. Uh, you hear her voice come out of the monitor, velvet, and then look, and <laughs> she's there. Ronnie yeah. Spector, the same thing. You know, I, I, she's dancing in front of me and it's like that that ronette is still there you know yeah the arch it's easy for us we did like one and a half cool things ever so <laughs> we, can, we can definitely remember them anytime we want we plaster that shit everywhere yeah yeah, yeah. To piggyback what Rock said before, something that led you here, right? That I was very interested in this book when I when I listened to it is that your interludes, my drum. Yeah. The passion that you have for your instrument, for 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 your tool, that's why you're here. Talk well, that's why you're here talking to the best podcast. But that's another <laughs> that's thing. <the> best <laughs> one. <laughs> no, but I'm saying your drum led you to where you are right now. Yeah, you know, I wrote the book because I, I was sick of this uh, uh, American Idol and all this other bullshit that's on. You know, where you think you win. kids are watching that and they think, oh, you win a contest and you get a record deal and then you become famous overnight. You know, so, yeah. no, no. Yeah. You've got to pay your dues. That's why I started from when I first started playing drums, my first band, the Rogues, you know, and you know, you walk past that that, that little uh, thing we had going over this little stream in the town I lived in, and I spray painted Rogues on there, and then somebody said a couple of weeks later, have you seen that that way you spray painted Rogues? And mm-hmm. I said, no, I haven't seen it in a while. He goes, you should go look at it. And I go look at it, and it says somebody sprayed socks underneath <laughs> Rogues, you know. <laughs> Welcome to New York. <laughs> you know, it's like things like that. And because there's there's the great road that people know uh, about me. And then yeah. there's the dark side that, that runs parallel with that great road. And gotcha. you know, people don't usually know that dark side. I mean, we lost Doug Stegmaier, our bass player, to suicide because of that dark side. I mean, he got way into drugs and, and alcohol. And, and then when Billy cut him loose, you know, it was nobody's fault. But, you know, Doug did what he did to himself. But, yeah. you know, it was just... Tragic, you know. I I just thought how um how you explained the in between of the chapters, these interludes, how the passion that you have for your drum and why you play it, and oh uh, there was a quote, and I'm sorry if I bang this up. There was a quote you had in the book that said, uh, "A a band is nothing without its drummer." A band is only as good as its drummer. Uh, only as good as its drummer. <laughs> and if you disagree with me, you're a bass player or a keyboard player. <laughs> player no, I mean, uh, it, it starts from the bottom up. You know, you've got to have that solid. I mean, our job is, my job as a drummer is to get people up off their ass to, to, to uh, move and to keep the band together. Yeah. And also my, my job with Billy was to create uh, parts for the songs that he wrote. I mean, he was very classical, Billy. Yeah. 
you know, and I changed when I came in and I threw shit at him and said, that sucks, man. You know, this, he would call me up and sing me songs. And I go, no, you can't say that. That's terrible. <laughs> you know, and he goes, I knew you would say that. And he'd hang up and goes back to the drawing board. You know, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. But, you know, to be creative, when I played, I, other guys would get charts and they would, they would read music. Mm -hmm. I read Billy's lyrics. And if I record with somebody, I want their lyrics. I want to know what they're singing about. You know, because like I say in the book, you're gonna you're gonna play a song that's called I'll, "I'm Gonna Love You Forever," with like brushes or whatever, nice and mellow and stuff. And you're gonna play a song that's called "I, I Hate Your Guts So Badly I'm Gonna Drive My Car Through Your Father's House." There's gonna be a lot of China symbols and double bass drum, and you know. So it, you know, it, the lyric really meant a lot to me. Yeah. You know. So and and the passion playing live is like some guy comes to a show and uh and he, and he brings his girlfriend with him he's he's paying a lot of money for tickets he's got to get gas in his car to drive it. he's probably got to take the chick out to, to uh to dinner mm. you know uh gets to the gig she walks in she sees the t-shirt she wants a t-shirt you know she's still a little hungry she gets a hot dog and the guy's like five hundred dollars into us already <laughs> You know, he better see something or else he could have stayed home with a bottle of wine on the rug in front of the fireplace. It probably got laid that night. But he decided to come see us with his girlfriend. You know, do you attribute that to, you know, being in the studio with Billy Joel and you actually shaped his songs? You made what he yeah. had and you made it and you made it. You put your stamp on it and, and, and made him better. Is that why he was like, this guy's got to be on the road with me, too? Like, I, I have to duplicate this. Well, that happened before. Uh, he was in L.A. Uh, making albums. He did Piano Man and Street Life Serenader, those two albums. And he used a drummer, Ron Tutt, who played with Elvis. Mm -hmm. He used him as a studio musician. And also Reese Clark who was the touring drummer with him at the time before me, he played on Captain Jack on Piano Man. Okay. So um, what happened was I had a band called Topper and uh, Doug Stegmeyer, myself, Russell Javers, and this other fellow, Howard Emerson, were in Topper. And Billy uh, hired Doug to go out and play uh, on the Street Life Serenader tour. On that tour, Billy said, I want to move back to New York. I, I want to go into the studio with the same guys that um, will go on the road with me. I want the same band to, to play in the studio and go on the road with me. And gotcha. I want a New York style drummer. And and Doug said, well, you know the guy, because I knew Billy when I was 17 and he knew me and we mm -hmm. played in the same clubs as different bands. Yeah. And um, so, you know, he knew that he wanted that. He wanted that aggressive, like beat me up kind of, thing going on but with a pop frame from this classical pianist you yeah. Know? yeah 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 so i think i think he he came up with the great melodies and stuff like that and i brought it to the street you know you were like his consigliere i uh, was well, yes <laughs> I, well i say in high gun i say in high gun if billy was the father of those songs i was at least the uncle that's right <laughs> that's right you did say that yeah how much are you touring right now with the lords of 52nd street oh we we're starting to, uh, you know, we, we do a lot of stuff around in the tri-state area, but we also go down to Florida, Arizona, California. We get around. Yeah. We get around. You know, the COVID really knocked us down for, a, uh, you know, at least a year we didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. That really sucked, you know. And still uh, promoters are like a little afraid of, of, of taking on a band because if it comes back again, which I, yeah. oh, God, I hope it doesn't. Yeah, I know. Uh, you know, kind of freaky mm -hmm. you know i and think it's done i hope and session work is still is session work still in the mix or are you still oh yeah session works in the mix uh richie canada who played sax on all those great mm -hmm. billy songs um he has a studio co city and mm -hmm. uh I, i'm kind of the house drummer there okay and people come through and i play on their on their stuff you know he's recorded mariah carey there and celine dion and a whole bunch of bullshit <laughs> and he's got the, J, uh, the uh, who those brothers? What are they called? The um, I don't know. The brothers, Jonas. <laughs> Jonas, there you go. Good. Oh, the, oh no, shit. Man, that was a good one. Jonas, he's got the Jonas brothers there this week. Yeah. See, e even though that it was a lifetime ago, that big part of your life, that Billy part of your life, because I'm sure you you look at your life in sections almost. Yeah. I would. I see your life in sections, kind of, and you're still doing what you love. You're still yeah. playing music. Mm -hmm. And you're also with, uh, well, like you mentioned before, you're also cha doing charities, right? Yeah. Is it still with the little kids that rock? Yeah. Little, little, little kids, kids rock. rock. Yeah. Can you, yeah. Can, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes. Uh, little Kids Rock uh, was started by a, uh, 
uh, he was a, a teacher in uh, L.A. Mm-hmm. Dave Wish is his name. And he saw kids just hanging out after school. And he brought them in and he said, look, I'll, I'll teach you how to play the guitar. You know, so he started out with like 20 students and uh, he, he started to uh, he set up this charity thing, you know, Little Kid Rock. And uh, from those 20 students, he a million kids have gone through Little Kid's Rock already. And and um, what happens is the companies give him, you know, he has fundraisers. And with that money, he buys instruments at, at wholesale to give to the kids. OK. And if they take the, if they play stay guitar. And they take the, the lessons for a year, stay after school and take the lessons for a year. They get to keep the guitar. Mm-hmm. And awesome. what he does, they teach the teachers in the school, like the math teacher, because they feel that if a kid learns one chord, he can play probably 25 songs. If he learns two chords, he can learn to play 50 songs. If he learns the four, all the three chords to the progression, he can learn like he can play like 150 songs. You gotcha. know? Yeah, yeah. So they they w- let them learn the songs that they want to learn first, rather than when when you were probably younger, you probably known a lot of people that uh, started to take piano or guitar or something like that, and they gave it up because they ah, they didn't want to play classical music. I didn't want to play you know chopsticks and all that. I wanted to rock out like Little Richard or something like that. So he lets the kids do that, and then they'll go back to see where all that came from. You know, let them start out with yeah. what they know and love, and then they'll go back. Yeah, it's a nice method. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's, that, that's actually unique. And I, I think that's probably, you probably hook people in more where, like you said, they may have given up. I don't want to play classical music. Right. But- yeah. I know a lot. I run into people all the time. I started playing drums and then I took lessons and it got too hard. And I, you know, no, oh, I started playing to the Beatles. That was it to me. You know, no other school like the Beatles. Well, you know, I, I, in sixth grade, I, uh, my father bought me drums. And by the way, I did. I didn't ask him for drums. He he knew. I, I asked him later in my career, "Why did you get me drums?" Okay. And he said, "Because they didn't make Prozac when you were a kid." <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so he gets me these drums, and, and I go into this the sixth grade school band. I'm like twelve years old. I go into the sixth grade school band and I can't do the buzz roll for the Star Spangled Banner, you know, that roll that goes through the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And um, and the teacher actually said to me, put down the sticks, DeVito, you'll never do anything with the drums, you know. Mm-hmm. So I got discouraged. I mean, you know, it wasn't until I, I'm like in, in uh, uh, the eighth grade and stuff like that, that I'm, I'm now 13 going to become 14 and uh, I, I'm seeing these different human beings in the hall and they're really pretty and they got nice skin and stuff like that. And I want to meet them, yeah. but they're like the guys that played sports, you know, yeah. and I don't play sports and you know, I sucked at it. I still don't play sports, <laughs> you know? So, um, and, and then of course in, in 64, the Beatles came on the Ed Sullivan show and I, I looked at them and, and uh, I thought that's what I want to do. Fuck the buzz roll. I want to do that. I want to tour the world with my friends and play music and make people girls scream and shit. You know. <laughs> now, I hope you did it. Um, you may not be as childish and vindictive as Archie and I, but I hope you called that sixth grade teacher after you made it and was like, "Hey, f <laughs> off! Who's not gonna? Who's not gonna? I I didn't put the sticks down. Look at me." <laughs> uh, no, I think he's dead. By now. <laughs> Um, what would you say? So you were sixth grade, 12 years old. If you, if a 12 year old came up to you now and, and had interest in drums, where would you, what, what advice would you give them? I would say uh, the, the thing to do is, is to listen. Playing drums, you need to listen. You know, you can read the notes on the, on the, on the, uh, on the page, but you're not going to get what it feels like. You ask yourself, you listen to ACDC and Phil Rudd, is playing probably the most simplest thing that you can possibly play on the drums. But why do you love it so much? <laughs> yeah. Because it's the way it feels. It's yeah. how he's playing it. If you can capture that in yourself, play it like that. So people turn around and go, holy shit, this guy's just playing two and four. But man, he's driving at home. Yeah. You know, yeah. That that's what you gotta learn. You learn by listening. And you listen to all different kinds of music because then you take something from one style, put it into your style. Take something from another style, put it into your style. To tell a kid, you know, 
follow your dreams is like, eh, it's kind of hard. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, you know I and it's the book, you know, follow your dreams and look, you know, guys yeah. die on the road, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, but, uh, you know, just make it through school. You yeah. know, don't, don't think that oh, I'm going to go, you know, like Billy, Billy was like, I don't want to go to Columbia University. I'm going to Columbia Records. Well, you lucked out, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It's like baseball. You know, the kids want to play baseball. It's like, how many professional baseball players are there? Like 700? That's it? Yeah. You know, mm. how many kids want to play baseball? You know? So, it's more the anomaly than, than the, the rule. So that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. One, one of the cool things that I saw about you uh, was that – you're playing. You're jamming out with Phil X in the in the studio for the Hired Gun, amongst other musicians. Yeah. And I, I, so I'm, in, you know, I'm all right. That's the Billy Joel's drummer, but he's fucking, he's rocking though. But he's like, he's like, he's playing heavy. He's like, it's heavy. And I'm into, I'm into heavier shit. I'm a big Springsteen fan. I love that shit. But okay. like, but, but I'm like. All right, so this guy is versatile. So I, I need to I need to find out more about him. Like I need to know why, wh- like where he came from and why he plays this way. And and it's this New York fucking attitude where where it shines through. You know. You know it's 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 funny because uh, Kenny was playing with me on that. We were both mm-hmm. playing drums at the same time. We also did a, a cover of Big Shot in that uh, that that same session mm-hmm. that day. But they couldn't put it in the video in the hired gun because I was still pissed at Billy and he was still pissed at me and he didn't get the rights. He said, no, you can't use it. But it's like one of the best versions of Big Shot I have ever heard. And where does that lie? Really fucking good. It was so really it, good. So it's just recorded somewhere and that's it. But yeah. Yeah. Just recorded somewhere and that's it. Derek St. Holmes singing lead from yeah. Nugent's band. Yeah. Nugent. Oh, fucking <laughs> ripper. Bill X, Kenny Aronoff, myself. Who else was in that band? Ah, oh, dude. And and, and and do you have it? Or you don't even have I it? I don't have it, no. <laughs> I don't have it. I did it, though, I, I swear. <laughs> I, I, I don't have it. Arch for, arch for tracking down the producers of that uh, film. They, yeah. they know where it's at. It's stored you somewhere. Know, I'm going to have to contact Fran and ask him if he's got it. Yeah, just because you, you, you want to hear it. That's all. <laughs> I just want to hear it. I just want to hear it. it around. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to play it for my friends. <laughs> was it hard, easy, or uncomfortable to ask Billy Joel to do the forward for the book? Well, I had uh, approached Billy through email um, mm-hmm. uh, when I was doing the book because everyone was saying, we're trying to think about who could do the forward. Yeah. You know, uh, we named a couple of people and stuff like that. But the, the guys that published it said it would be great if Billy would do it. And I was like, there's no way. There's no yeah. fucking way. You know. So, I, I was told him in, e- in an email that, um, you know, I was a little discouraged with how it ended, how yeah. it ended. You know, I love the guy. I mean, 30 years together. Yeah. Uh, now I'm playing with the Lords. We're doing all the songs again. The only thing that was missing now was my friendship with this guy that I looked at for 30 years. And he looked at me, yeah. you know, back and forth in the studio and live. So I, I said uh, I was a little upset, you know, and discouraged about how, how it ended. He wrote me back immediately and said, I feel the same way. You know, I'm really sorry I did. I said, yeah. my band is coming down to Florida. Well, let's get together for dinner or, you know, breakfast, whatever you want to do. And he said, you know, why don't we do breakfast? Because at the time you want to do the dinner, I put my kids to sleep because he has two little kids. I have one yeah. five-year-old. Yeah. He has two kids that are in between that Got five-year-old. It. <laughs> So I knew that that he had changed. There was something different about him. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, so I met him down there, and we were talking, and we didn't mention anything about the the past or what happened. We just talked about people who got sick or who passed away that used to work with us and stuff like that. Yeah. Then at the end of the conversation, um, I I asked him. I said, "So what are you what are you going to do now? You know, you're playing the garden once a month. You're doing that." He goes, "Yeah, but I'm thinking about slowing down and stuff like that." You know, yeah, mm-hmm. he, 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 you know, he admitted that it's not the gig that gets you; it's the traveling that gets you now. Yeah, gotcha. and yeah. So um, then he said, "So what are you doing?" And I told him about my bands, Lords of Fifty Second Street. He goes, "Oh, I heard I heard about you guys, man. Everybody's telling me about you guys." 
you know. So, um, and then I told him about the Slim Kings, another band that I have with these mm-hmm. young guys that we write our own shit and stuff. And then I said, oh, oh, and by the way, I wrote a book. And he went, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, man, it's not like that. It's not like that. Yeah, and yeah, believe yeah. me, I could have thrown, like, people under the bus. Yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I didn't want to do that. And I said, well, you know, if you're interested, maybe you write the forward. And he went, I'll write you forward. <laughs> and then, then he goes, no, uh, send it to me. I'll, I'll check it out. No, yeah, I'll yeah. write you forward. You know, so that, that's very I cool. sent it to him and, and he just went over it and corrected things that one one thing was where I say in the book, um, when did, so he said, oh, oh, when it goes, when did it go from love me, love my band? That's what he told George Martin when he turned him down as a producer Okay, mm-hmm. to get the fuck out of my dressing room. When did it go from love me, love my band to get the fuck out of my dressing room? He said, I never said that. I said, you're absolutely right. One of the guys in your office said, when did that happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. So I, I changed that, put one of the guys in the office. Gotcha. And um, he told me that uh, we didn't record um, the River of Dreams album that never came out on Block Island. It was Shelter Island. So, gotcha. You know, those things. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, that's so cool. I've been mean, read the book overnight. Like, boom. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, he wants least, to know. He, he wants to know if you were. Uh, yeah. <laughs> how bad? How bad you slammed him? <laughs> he was probably sweating. <laughs> it's like, oh shit! Turning the pages. <laughs> I, I tell you what, a lot of the other guys in that band were sweating too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, honey, you got to put the kids to bed tonight. I want to see if Liberty gave me the ones and twos. <laughs> <laughs> so, may, may I ask, where's the relationship now? Oh, we uh, go back and forth, emails all the time. You know, I see him. I have lunch with him sometimes, you know, if we're close by. And we talk. We just talk about, oh, what are you doing? Uh, you know, uh, the other day, uh, not the other day, the last summer, we were talking about, uh, you know, the, the business. And I said, you still like doing what you're doing? And he goes, ah, I get, ah, some of the songs I don't like anymore. Yeah. You know, because I never liked my life. I can't stand that song in my life. Yeah. I hate it. Uh-huh. You know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, we talked about, the 19 year old that still lives inside, you know, like he's, he said, you know, sometimes I wish that 19 year old would just go away. I said, yeah, well, you get a front in front of a row full of girls. You want that 19 year old to be there. He just comes out, you know, and he's the guy that's aggressive and he's the guy that's banging those drums to death, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so, man. The 19 year old, he's still there. He's, he's still there. <laughs> he ain't going so, away. Uh, you, you said, and I've heard it, it before. You said that you, d- you never liked my life. Um, what genre? Because I feel like Billy Joel and the, the music you guys created, it's like a genre in and of itself. Some of it's rock. Obviously, you know, you have the Innocent Man album, lots of doo wop and like stuff like right. that. What was your, I mean, it, it, there, I'm sure it wouldn't be one, but what was kind of like the stuff you gravitated to the most? Uh, the, my favorite album that we did was uh, The Nile and Curtain, I think. Um, really? Yeah, there's a song on there called Laura that uh, uh-huh. the whole album was kind of a tip of the hat to the Beatles. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, uh, the song Laura, uh, there's a part in an instrumental break that sometimes I, I got to slap myself and go, is this the Beatles or is this us? <laughs> you know, it's so close. And Julian Lennon actually uh, uh, recruited Phil Ramone to produce his first album after hearing Nala Curtin. Oh, really? wow. Yeah. That was, that was a cool one to make. I mean, you know... The, Glass Houses was fun. I don't. I'm not not a fan of you. Maybe right that song. Nah. <laughs> it's just <laughs> plotting away. Yeah, it's it plotting away. Played in every fucking bar from here to Tallahassee. <laughs> every, everyone, and every time you know you go to a club or something like that, and the band is there, and they find out you're there, and they're like, "Hey, you want to come up and play? Yeah, we'll play a Billy Joel song. Which one do you want to play? Uh, Which one you may be right." You know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> So sure, I'll play. Yeah, you you seem like you seem like a very good, straightforward dude. Now, do you tell now? Do you tell Billy Joel? Yeah, this song is just. I'm, I mean, I'll be honest with you; it's just not my favorite. Or I don't like this, or I don't like. We we were rehearsing with Elton. You know, we did the Billy Joel and Elton tours together. Sure. And and we're rehearsing once, and we're doing my life. And Elton stops the song and he points at me and he goes, "He's not playing what's on the record." <laughs> and Billy looks at him and goes, he's not going to play what's on the record. He hates it. <laughs> uh, that 
that's but I, I guess I, I, obviously you guys, like you said, now you talk. You know, when you spend that much yeah. time together and create such beautiful things, uh, you, you're always going to have a place in each other's hearts. And I think the respect is always going to be there, right? You know, he he knows that you you don't like parts of his songs, but he knows what you also bring to his songs and how you brought yeah. them alive. So I think that's something that no matter what happens in relationships, you can really never take that away. No, uh, it's it's amazing what we did together. It's like you know you know a band is like a marriage you you fight you argue you know oh yeah and uh, it's hard to keep it together you know, you know i mean it's easy to put a band together it's hard to keep them together yeah, that, yeah. that's the part oh, yeah. egos start getting bigger the money comes in and it's like you know he's making all the money and now he's paying us and all this time we thought we were his band and we're going to share the wealth <laughs> sure yeah that went down the tubes real fast <laughs> you found out the hard way there's a difference between bonuses oh yeah and, and royalties oh yeah yeah a bonus uh a royalty runs forever yeah and a bonus can be taken away whenever they want to stop it and they did after he got screwed by his manager and uh-huh. he came up to me and doug we were actually playing coliseums but going into stadiums we were about to go into stadiums and we were okay. getting a percentage of the gross and, awesome. And, and he comes up to me and Doug and goes, I want everything back. <laughs> my <laughs> shirt? will be on salary. It'll be nice, but I want everything back. Oh, my you God. Sure, I'm sure you want that, Billy? <laughs> mm-hmm. Is this is what you really want, Billy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wanted everything back. Oh, my yeah. God. You know, he got screwed. I mean, he got screwed really badly. I mean, here he's a guy that thinks he's a millionaire. And then he looks in his bank account and is like, holy shit, I got nothing. That's crazy when you hear stories like that. Same right? thing with Springsteen, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm doing everybody. God. Everybody. Especially those oldies bands. Like, you know, the McCoys. Uh, Rick Erringer was in the in the McCoys. Mm-hmm. And he never got a dime for Hangout Sloopy. You know? Oh, Never God. got a dime. Jeez. And you would think that how frequently it happens that people would start smartening <laughs> up and be like, all right, listen, I'm not yeah. going to sign this for, you know, until yeah. you want. Well, the two guys in bad fingers, they killed themselves because the manager screwed them so badly that one guy couldn't believe it that it happened to him. And he killed himself. One guy knew about the manager and didn't tell the other guy, and he killed himself. <laughs> oh, shit. God damn. Yeah, it's a rough business. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, you, you might tell the twelve-year-old in sixth grade, "Hey, don't go into this business." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to retract what I said about that twelve-year-old. <laughs> hey, remember I said follow your dreams? <laughs> yeah, right, forget it. Forget the dream. It's funny because anybody that meets you is like, "Oh, it's so great to meet you." You know the songs. I love the songs. I love what you guys do. It's great, wonderful, yeah, yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Nobody says. How many times have you been married? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, until they ask me, how do you hit the drum so hard? I said, well, I got a picture of my first ex-wife on the snare drum. A picture of my second ex-wife on the top drum. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's oh, the, that, I think I guess the part that that the public doesn't never think about is is the personal side of it, the wear and tear it takes mm. on any relationship you have. You know, whether it be wife a husband kids whatever it may be um yeah. that's the part i mean i guess you, you, that it goes with the territory but you do pay a price right you do pay a price even with my family i remember my my aunts uh, if, if i couldn't make it to a sunday dinner that my family was going to because it would be like oh what, what's money too big now you can't come with your family anymore <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, got, I got this gig i gotta go away what are you a big shot yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's fantastic. And, and Archie and I being also from an Italian families, like your your yeah. answer, your answer, boss, on your balls. Yeah. <laughs> all the time. All the time. It's crazy. I uh I saw a video the other day of a little dude that you brought up and played with you guys. And he played piano. It was a video, oh, yeah. and he played. And you guys played some some Billy Joel songs, and you guys rocked it. How does it feel to influence somebody who's? The, I mean, this kid wasn't even an itch on his dad's balls by the, <laughs> by, the, by, the, by the time these when these songs yeah. came out. Yeah, well, like, well it, it's really great. I mean, I had done a, uh, this a couple of drum clinics up in Utica uh, <clears throat> with with a, f- a friend of mine. And um, they, he had all these kids come and play piano. There, there was a, there were a whole bunch of kids came 
that did Billy Joel songs. Okay. And they, they asked if I would play the drums for the kids. And I said, yeah. And there's one kid that he did New York State of Mind. Gotcha. He was great. You know, he, when I went in, in this little show that we did without the Lords, he, he had this little sequence jacket on and really just did up the whole Vegas thing. And, you know, yeah, it was really yeah, cool. Yeah. So we were playing close to him and I invited his family to the show. And we got him up to do um, New York State of Mind. And he really, really did good. I mean, he he's good, but you know that he has a lot of growth yeah. that, that needs to happen. Yeah. When, uh, when I get blown away, it's like I, I'll, I'll run into somebody at the NAM show, you know, it's mm-hmm. out in California. Yeah. And, a, and a guy go, man, I've been your, uh, uh, you've been my idol. And I've had your, your post on my wall when I was growing up and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, that's great. So do you still play? Because, yeah, I play with Prince. You know, it's like, <laughs> wow. Or I play with Matchbox 20 or, you know, yeah, stuff like yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. holy crap, you know. That, that feels good. That feels it great. It, it feels good when they call me the American Ringo or something yeah. like that. Yeah, like, uh, you, made, you made your mark, Liberty. And it's, it, it's amazing. And, you know, we all appreciate what you did, dude. Um, and, and what, what you, you still, still what you still do, yeah. right? I mean, uh, still like, doing it. Yeah, talk still about doing it. like to me. That's what's so striking. Is it seems to me you you sound just as hungry today and so as excited to do your craft and and you know create art as you did all along. Well, listen, I, I I I love my wife. I love my little kid. You know, my other daughters are big and they're on their own. One's an actress. She called mm-hmm. me today. She goes, Dad, just give me. Uh, just give me uh, a one sentence uh, uh, about about acting. One sentence. <laughs> I just wrote, be believable. Yeah. Just wrote, there you That's go. the best. That's <laughs> the best. Thanks, Dad. You know, I, she's, been on, she's on TV making Hallmark movies. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, all stuff like that. So it's like when, you, when you're like around that kind of stuff and people are like looking up at you, and they, some people freak out when they, when they meet you. They're, they're shaking like this. Oh, my it's God. Like, yeah. Dude, that's weird. <laughs> you know? Don't be fucking weird, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Don't be weird. I've had friends come to rehearsals when I was with Billy that were very calm, you know, great guys. We used to hang out, yeah. smoke pot, whatever we're doing. And and uh, they get around Billy and they totally change. It's like, really? I have to tell him, calm down, get out, get outside, <laughs> you know? It's like, dude. <laughs> oh, do, you have, do you guys have any of those? Like, if you met somebody, you'd, like, fold? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, now, if I had to think of somebody now. Springsteen would be a little, I'd, I'd probably try to get my shit together. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you you would fall you yeah. fall apart. Yeah, I I'd, I'd try really hard though. I would I'd, I'd be like, come on. And I'm gonna say there's a ninety nine percent chance you say something very stupid. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny when you when you meet them. It's hard. You start you just lose all control of being able I know. to talk. You know, I I passed him once in the in the hallway. He was in the studio. We were in the studio. Okay. And I passed him in the in the in the hallway, and I just went, "How you doing?" And, and just walked past him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I told somebody, and they go, "Did you stop to talk to him?" And I said, "What am I going to say?" Hi, Bruce. <laughs> I'm Liberty. I play drums with Billy Joel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Do it. You know, doing this podcast. Archie and I have have been in a band together. We met a lot of cool people. But like, even like doing this podcast, like all day thinking about, oh my god, we're going to talk to Liberty DeVito tonight. Like. <laughs> It's what excites. I swear to God, it's it's what excites us. Archie's been like a like a like a, a little schoolgirl talking about it. So yeah, why not? Um, but we so get what, like that, and then we what, get the excitement. What do you guys play? What do you, you play? Like he, uh, heavy rock? No, no, instrument. Instrument. Oh. instrument. Guitar. I sing. And, and Archie you play guitar? guitar? Yes, yep. sir. Try to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good time, man. Like we 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 uh we always call ourselves local heroes. So we got to play some uh, some cool theaters in in New Jersey, yeah. uh, Starland Ballroom. That's a pretty reputable place. I don't know if you ever heard of that. Yeah, sure. Um, and we got to open up for some of our favorite musical acts, you know, that we you know, admired. Yeah. And we never made anything of it. We never toured, but we 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 really enjoyed what we did. In this, we took it as far as we could locally, put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I always tell kids, I say, you know, don't judge success by money, by how much money you're making. 
if you're in, in the basement and you're busting open a couple of beers with your friends and you're having a ball just playing some ACDC or whatever you're doing, you're having a great time, you're breaking a sweat, you're just having a great time. Yeah. At times, you're more successful than I am playing Madison Square Garden and I'm just pissed at Billy because he's like, you know, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, I just yeah, don't yeah. like, I don't want to be there, you know, so... We always think back of stuff like that. Like it, we would just spend like hours in in a in a rehearsal studio, and like that was like to me, we enjoyed going there, and that was the fun, and that was like what you know what kept yeah. you going. So yeah, I get that now when I uh, if if we have gigs with the Lords of Fifty Second Street, usually if I if it's four hours or less, I'll drive there mm-hmm. because my uh, car. Is, is my sanctuary, you know, because the mm-hmm. five-year-old's running around, I got to take her to school, you know, we don't have a nanny. If mm-hmm. I'm not working with the music, I'm taking care of the kid because my wife works, at, you know, she works all the time. Gotcha. And, um, uh, which, by the way, is is uh, how you become a successful musician. You marry a woman that works. <laughs> and, uh, so, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I get in the car and I get on serious radio, man. And I'll, I'll play with the Beatles and I feel like I've drove, driven four hours with my best four friends in the back seat and we're singing all the songs, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's car, car to me is definitely uh, a place where I reflect and I listen and I find new music and I, I listen to old music and, yeah. and, and there's nothing closer. I know this sounds like, you know, a little weird, but there's nothing closer to m- magic than a music yeah no and there is a, do you know what i'm saying how, how a song can make you feel well i'm sure you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> but i'm saying like you know uh how a song could make you feel you you, you know you, like it, it's like no other closest thing well, you're gonna get to magic that's why i write at the end of the book you know when i when i'm i'm really happy now you know i got the life and the, got a new wife got a new friend you know that's yeah <laughs> yeah <yep, yep. laughs> <laughs> but uh, and I got the five year old. Like looking at the five year old growing up, I I can't believe how much I missed with my other girls. You know, yeah. we went on the road and stuff like that. But uh, I I really appreciate music now. You know, like at the end of the book, when uh, I'm so happy. But sometimes if it starts to get dark, I'll mm-hmm. I'll just remember that count off of Paul McCartney in the beginning of I saw her standing there. You know, <laughs> that was it. That that does it for me. If I yeah. put that on, you just hear that one, two, three, four. Like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I yeah. like that when they're lowering me into the ground when I'm dead. I want to three, That's great. Yeah. So I, I want to leave off with this one last thing, man. I, and we appreciate your time. Thank yeah. you so much. My, my cousin, my cousin, Chris from uh, South River, New Jersey, he started a band many years ago called the stranger he was a bit he was a, he was, it was a cover band right he played piano he sang my uncle was the bass player they had a really good band and you know played it all around right what? we're at a family party a couple weeks ago and he goes i saw this band on youtube they were fucking phenomenal there was i, I think lords of 52nd street damn like that's like the closest thing you're gonna get to and then i went wait a minute that is fucking Billy Joel's band. <laughs> He's like, I knew yeah. that they were fucking good. I I, I can hear it. Yeah. So, we, yeah. so real quick, so I, so I text him and I said, hey, man, there's a very good chance I'm going to have Liberty on. He's like, fuck it. Tell him I'm Billy Joel's biggest fan. And and Billy's band sucks now. And, and, <laughs> and they sound like a boring elevator band. And they're filling seats on his name only. Big, and, and, and Billy needs to get him back. Fucking band, but ha- but have a great interview. <laughs> <laughs> and I can I can edit that out if you fucking don't want that. Whatever. No, no but, leave uh, it in there. Leave it in. I hear it all the time. But uh, I, yeah, yeah, I just we wanted to throw that Jersey. out there. You guys got to come out and see us. Oh, if you ever dude, see, you definitely. Know, you just come. You know. Oh hell yeah, man. We 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 now follow. Lords of Fifty Second Street. If you guys are playing locally around here, man, we would love. Yeah, hey, we'll come to New York uh, as well. My other band, the Slim Kings. Uh, it's it's me and two other guys. When we first met, you know, it was a few years ago, and they, they were still in their twenties. These other guys. The great thing is, is that I'm the old school guy. Yeah. And, and they they have the new ideas. They'll come up to me and they'll play a, a hip hop tune, and they'll go, "Can we write a song 
uh, around this rhythm. And I'll listen. I'll go, they sampled Motown. That's a Motown group. That they sampled. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that's where the connection comes. Uh-huh. You know, they have the fresh ideas lyrically. Yeah. Uh, you know, because uh, today so much is happening that we're oblivious to or, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. Uh, we don't. We, you know, Billy wrote a great song at one time called Shades of Grey. When you were younger, it was easy. Everything was black and white. You know, I love the war. I hate the war. You know, we should do, do this. We shouldn't do that. Uh-huh. Now it's like, uh, I don't know. You know, <laughs> defund the police? I don't think so. You know, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. not. You know, I, I like protection. But yeah, <laughs> yeah they should t- calm down a little bit, you know. I know. But, um, yeah. it, so with these young guys, they, they say, you know, fuck the world. And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And it's great, you know. So we we do all original materials, and we we play out, and we you know make CDs that we stack up in our house. Where are you guys at <laughs> now, <laughs> musically? Where are you guys at now? We uh, have we did three albums, and we are playing a club called the Triad at the end of October. Uh, okay. It's in the city. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we got to check this out, man. The Slim Kings, Lords of 52nd Street. Yeah. L- the Great Liberty DeVito. Thank you so much, man. Uh, we, I, I can't tell you. Yes, I was like a little girl this week just because I the the book was fucking phenomenal. And I really, I really yeah. enjoyed it. And I really you, did. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. The name of your podcast yeah, like, yeah. frightened me a little bit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, you know. Yeah, usually, uh, well, I have a podcast. When you do it, what's it called? Uh, Keys of Ivory. You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> so, and they're afraid to ask questions. Like, what did you do? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's fantastic. All, all fun and games till you're the third fucking guy on our podcast. If you got something else to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I told you, hey, hey, him and Kenny started a podcast. That's gold right there. So you, you, you might want to think. You might want to think that. Just saying. Uh, Liberty, thank you. thank you so much uh, on behalf of me and Rocco. Uh, thank you, and, well, and and good luck. And we would love to come see you. And we'll we'll run up to you and fucking buy you a drink and do say, it. say hello, bro. Do it, all right, guys. Awesome, all right, man. Have good a great night. night. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Okay, we'll talk right. soon. All right. Bye. Bye. The great Liberty DeVito. Yes, I was very excited all week because why? That's why. That's why. (laughs) What a great fucking guest. And the story. We didn't even tap into the road stories or the or 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 the, the the recording behind the scenes one of the one of the things i wanted to talk to him about was that he went over each fucking track in his book ah uh, uh, everything that was recorded with billy in, in in the time that he was in the band and i can't wait to have him on again we just we just hung up with him i can't wait to have him on again <laughs> uh, you're right you, you, i mean dude a guy with that kind of career and that kind of uh you know uh experience and and impact on music of his time you you can we literally scratch the surface yes me and you you can learn all about us in i don't know what six and a half minutes yeah yeah if that four for me two for you (laughs) with that being said rocco what do you have to say to the people if you just heard us talking to the legend, Liberty, 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 then you just listen to Not These Two Fucking Guys podcast. Yep. And late breaking news right now: Julio dead at fifty nine years old. No, seriously, is Julio dead? Oh uh, that, no! That's what the reports are. I'm seeing it on. I'm seeing it on the old socials. And my cousin Benny texts me about it too. So he's got his finger on the fucking pulse. That's for sure. <laughs>